you all so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. And I'd like to start with what we communicated at our first gathering. We'd like to begin this time and every time by acknowledging that the land threatened by these pipelines has been stolen once before from the indigenous peoples of those areas. That it is indigenous land that we stand on here today and that it is indigenous peoples who started and lead the pipelines resistance movement. And we are really honored to have Vanessa Bolin here with us today who has been a tremendous advocate and leader in this fight and has firsthand experience and knowledge from Standing Rock to the fight in Virginia and has been uh, an amazing support for all of those communities uh, that are fighting these projects. So welcome, Vanessa. Um, I'm very honored to be here to speak to y'all today. Sometimes I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm um, here and, and glad to talk to you. Um, as a First Nations people, I feel that it is our obligations. We have always been the caretakers of the land. And when I went out to Standing Rock, um, a lot of you may or may not know that I went out as a medic. So I went out with dual purpose as um, a water protector, but also as a medic to care for people who were in the camp. When I came back here, um, I came back with a whole new perspective and we all know why we're here. We know that we're standing for the water, for the land, for the air, to stop this destruction. And when I came back from Standing Rock, I kept warning people, you don't know what's coming for you. You don't know what's about to happen. And today I woke up to an article that was very deeply disturbing to me about uh, all of Vir Virginia state agencies getting together and uh, practicing this scenario of violent pipeline protesters against uh, pro-pipeline protesters and the two sides clashing. This all falls from Charlottesville, which a lot of you don't know. When I came back, I also was in Charlottesville and I treated those people who had been injured and ran over by a car. Um, I treated many of those people who had been pepper sprayed and maced. The only violence that I've ever seen at these um, various events are from fascist or by state-sponsored violence. Um, I stand here today and I condemn the scenario that was written by the state. I have yet in this pipeline struggle heard anybody have a call for arms. What they are painting us as, as violent protesters. With the Virginia Terrorism Task Force being involved in the scenario they put out, our voice just speaking against the pipeline makes us terrorists, and I condemn that. We are people. I am a grandmother. I am no one special, but I am an old grandma. I am indigenous, and I have a right to speak for Unchi Macaw, for Mother Earth. I have a right to protect the next seven generations drinking water, I have that right. We are now uh, facing oppression by the state and our constitutional rights are trying to be squashed. We need to stand up and push back against that narrative that they're writing. We are not violent, we are not paid, and we're not protesters, we are protectors. We are trying to protect the sanctity of the earth. We're trying to protect the water for our future generations. We have to stand stronger now than ever before and come together and remember that there is a good way. In Standing Rock, we had a saying, stay in prayer, stay in ceremony. I watched state-sponsored violence as people stood with their hands up, as they held feathers, as they sang songs, as they played drums, and they were still shot with rubber bullets. They were hit with pepper spray and mace. They were shot with water cannons in 27 degree weather. The violence is not by the people standing to protect the earth, it is by the state. It is by the government. We can no longer stand by and allow that to happen either. We have multiple fronts to fight on here and we just need to stand strong and stay in peace and ceremony. Everyone needs to understand that we're just trying to protect the rights of the future generations and we need to keep 
making sure we stay in that peace ceremony, in that prayer, that we do what we have to do to protect that water and give the state, um, just make them look stupid for this narrative that they have written. This narrative was written out of a failed attempt that happened up in, in Charlottesville. They majorly failed to protect innocent people and the violence that was brought was by fascists, by Nazis, by uh, white supremacists, and the police failed. So for them to take that scenario and tie that to the pipeline fights because of their failure there, it is doing us a disservice and bringing um, the wrong message. And it's something we have never, ever, ever portrayed. I don't see people as nutty sitting in a tree in a peaceful act who was starved by the state as violent. I see what they did as violent. They tried to kill her. They wanted to starve her out. I don't see people like Red, a 61-year-old grandma, sitting on her own land in a tree set as violent. She was a good person, and they denied her food until people just stepped up and, and forced them to give her food. I don't see us standing here holding signs as violent. We're peaceful people. We do need to fight back against this scenario. And I condemn what the state has done as, um, as a protector of the water and of the land, but also as a First Nations people. I've warned a lot of people for a long time, what you allow to happen in one community or one race of people is eventually going to roll up on your doorstep. And it's now rolling up. And it's up to you as, um, as citizens of the state and as citizens of this country to push back um, and demand your First Amendment rights be allowed to happen. Peaceful, um, peaceful assembly, also um, your freedom of speech should not be squashed by the states and especially by corporate greed because that's what we're fighting against. These pipelines will not benefit anyone except for the pockets of the people who are the shareholders and the uh, corporate executives. It does not benefit us in any way. So I thank you for letting me come and talk to you today. And uh, just remember to stay in peace and ceremony. Uh, speak out against the narrative that's being written because it's very dangerous. I was wondering if we wanted to read the letter now, and then we'll do chance after that. Um, to the governor, sometimes to the attorney general and DEQ, and that started on Valentine's Day, and we have received no response from his administration nor his secretary of natural resources. They have uh, ignored all of our communication, and so Stacy is going to read what we are delivering today. We write you again today because of your continued refusal to acknowledge the egregious racism and abuse of human rights involved with the Atlantic Coast and Mountain Valley pipelines. The land threatened by the pipelines has already been stolen before from the indigenous peoples of those areas. The practices of Dominion Energy and EQT in choosing the pipeline routes are descended of that colonialism. As acknowledged by your own Advisory Council on Environmental Justice, the Atlantic Coast and Mountain Valley Pipeline will transect the lands of the Powhatan, Monacan, Meharan, Tuscarora, Nottoway, Cherowin Haka, Nansman, Lumbee, and other First Nations, and they were not sufficiently consulted by the pipeline companies before routing the pipelines. MVP stated in its own report that 138 prehistoric and historic sites lie within a mile of the pipeline route, and MVP noted there were many native burial grounds in the path of the pipeline. The ACP will cross 140 acres of the Great Dismal Swamp, which is a long-known historical site where indigenous peoples of the area sought refuge from colonists. In North Carolina, 13% of the people impacted by the ACP are indigenous, while only 1% of the state's population is indigenous. Both pipelines will dispro disproportionately impact indigenous communities and result in the erasure of sacred, native, historical, and cultural resources. You stated during the dedication ceremony for the Capitol Square Monument honoring Virginia's First Nations that my hope is that progress and the completion of this monument will begin our journey toward healing. 
The Atlantic Coast and Mountain Valley pipelines cannot be part of the progress or healing. Governor Northam, it's time you acknowledge the lack of adequate consultation with the First Nations in the path of the pipelines, the erasure of sacred native historical and cultural sources that will happen as a result of these pipelines, and the environmental racism involved in that indigenous communities, along with communities of color and low-income communities, will bear disproportionate burdens along the pipeline routes. You can, pre you can prevent this appalling injustice. Stop the pipelines. as per our usual, directing them to the governor's mansion and anyone in his family or administration that's over there and then to his offices behind us. The first one, can we stop these pipelines? Can you stop these pipelines? Yes, you can. 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 Northam, come off it. Don't sell our state for profit which is especially troubling uh, hearing today that the Democratic Party received $12,500 from EQT uh, just last week, I believe. So, Northam, come off it. Don't sell our state for profit. Northam, come off it. Don't sell our state for profit. Northam, come off it. Don't sell our state for profit. Northam, come off it. Don't sell our state for profit. Northam. by these projects. Um, so the next chant is, stop supporting colonialism, stop the MVP. And then on the second round, we'll say stop the ACP. Stop, stop supporting colonialism, stop the MVP. Stop supporting colonialism, stop the ACP. Stop supporting colonialism, stop the MVP. Stop supporting colonialism. Stop the ACP. Stop supporting colonialism. Stop the MVP. Stop supporting colonialism. Stop the ACP. Stop supporting colonialism. Stop the MVP. Stop supporting colonialism. Stop the ACP. Water is life. 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 Once more. Water is life. Water is life. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to um, open the floor if people would like to share their thoughts about this um, situation. No. Yeah, I'm. If they. She said it somewhere else. And I'll go. So, <clears throat> then I'll pass it. Um, we're gathered here today because we're in solidarity with the indigenous communities that have been disproportionately targeted by the fossil fuel industry. And we recognize the historic colonialism and the systematic environmental racism of these projects um, built through sacred spaces without any consultation from tribes, private for-profit companies, are allowed to poison our water, our land, our air. And so 
I just want to reiterate that we call on Governor Northam to publicly acknowledge, address, and rectify the situation. I, I do want to point out that the Monica actually wrote a letter condemning the pipeline. And they were told because they were not a federally recognized uh, tribe that they did not uh, have to be consulted or heard. And they were told that. Now they are a federally recognized tribe. They still are against this pipeline. There are many indigenous sites uh, and burial sites that are just going to be plowed under. We know that. The Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe has come out, especially for the areas in the MVP in Franklin County, multiple, multiple sites. One that is an ancient native village that was in inhabitation from 10,500 years ago up until 400 years ago during uh, colonization and they were moved out. Everywhere you go, you step, you pick up a piece of pottery, there is an ax head, there is um, arrowheads, perfectly formed arrowheads that are just acres upon acres, and the pipeline's going right through this ancient village. They are going through multiple grave sites. And one thing we found out in Standing Rock, um, what really was a, a, a huge catalyst after the dog attacks by the hired mercenaries for the pipeline company was the day that they took bulldozers and bulldozed through sacred sites and grave sites and, and were told flat out, well, your graves aren't the same as ours because they didn't bear a white cross. If nothing says oppression, colonization, and hate, more than that, I don't know. Our grave sites as indigenous people, we were not Christians. We had our own religion. We had our own spirituality, our own beliefs, and, and they are not honoring that. A grave is a grave. But then again, MVP is also going underneath a Christian grave site. They were going to go through it. They have agreed to dig underneath the entire graveyard. That is a family grave plot. They hold nothing sacred. Um, it's up to us to demand that accountability and, and make them uh, recognize that you cannot disturb a grave. Um, I would just like to add that um, in the 1400s, uh, the Pope issued a doctrine of discovery which gave European countries the religious um, justification for going around the world to um, steal and acquire land and resources and to uh, subjugate and murder uh, indigenous peoples. And that process continues today in the form of especially multinational corporations, but we're seeing in our state in, in forms of uh, the ACP and LLC and EQT and these two pipelines. Um, as late as 2015, the Doctrine of Discovery was used in courts as evidence in, in arguing cases on behalf of uh, municipalities to ignore the rights of indigenous peoples. So I say today that it's not just governors and elected officials, but people of faith need to take a good look at our history and how we have supported these kinds of projects for the last thousands of years. Well, I was just reminded that all of the land here belong to indigenous people. On my property and my farm in Nelson County, when we plow up, I have lots of arrowheads that I've found there. There were indigenous people living there before that land was taken from them. So these pipelines are going through land that does not belong to the corporations. It does not belong to us. And I think we should be in respect of that. Thank you. Um, we stand with the communities affected by these pipelines, and we demand that Nor Governor Northam does the same, and we demand that he recognizes the racism 
and colonialism maintained by these pipeline companies, um, especially Dominion Energy. And I mean, he campaigned on a platform of, you know, racial justice, and he clearly, you know, was just using that as a means of getting elected and does not care. And we demand that he change. Yeah, and on that note of, of elections, um, all of us here worked hard. I know I worked very hard to, um, to get you elected, Northam, um, with the idea that you were the good doctor who was going to take in um, the lives of his patients, of the state, to heart. Um, I'm regretting that vote. I'm regretting that work, really very strongly and um, I think you need to look to the future if you're not concerned about the lives of your um, of the citizens of the state who you are a custodian of which seems to be pretty apparent um, then maybe you are more concerned about um, your political ambitions and that of your party um, I am extremely disappointed and disheartened that you don't even respond these people have been here since Valentine's Day and have written extremely eloquent, well-researched well letters and have received not so much as a response. That is unacceptable. Thank you. And I would uh, also just again urge Governor Northam to keep one of his many broken promises, which is visiting the affected communities. He said he was going to make councils. He said he would visit everything along the path, and he has done absolutely nothing. So uh, I would remind him of his own words. If he won't listen to any of us, maybe he'll listen to himself. Um, so, well, um, that pretty much concludes things. Thank you all, all so much for coming out, especially you, Vanessa. Thank you so much. Um, and we will go deliver the letter now. And again, we stand with the communities affected by these pipelines, and it's time for Governor Northam to do the same.